Section 1 of According to Promise by Charles Spurgeon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marianne. According to Promise by Charles Spurgeon. Section 1 A Sieve Needed. It is very important to be able to distinguish between things that differ for appearances are not to be relied upon. Things which seem to be alike may yet be the opposite of each other. A scorpion may be like an egg, and a stone like a piece of bread, but they are far from being the same. Like may be very unlike. Especially is this the case in spiritual things, and therefore it behooves us to be on our guard. It would be very difficult to say how far a man may go in religion, and yet die in his sins how much he may look like an heir of heaven, and yet be a child of wrath. Many unconverted men have a belief which is similar to faith, and yet it is not true faith. Certain persons exhibit pious affections which have the warmth of spiritual love, but they are quite destitute of gracious life. Every grace can be counterfeited, even as jewels can be imitated. As paste gems are wonderfully like the real stones, so sham graces are marvelously like the work of the Spirit of God. In soul matters, a man will need to have all his wits about him, or he will soon deceive his own heart. It is to be feared that many are already mistaken, and will never discover their delusion until they lift up their eyes in the world of woe, where their disappointment will be terrible indeed. The dead child of nature may be carefully washed by its mother, but this will not make it the living child of grace. The life of God within the soul creates an infinite difference between the man who has it and the man who has it not, and the point is to make sure that we have this life. Are you sure that you have it? It will be an awful thing to cry, Peace, peace, where there is no peace, and to prophesy smooth things for yourself and make your heart easy, and lull your conscience to slumber, and never to wake out of the sleep, till a clap of the thunder of judgment shall startle you out of a presumption into endless horror. I desire to help my reader in the business of self-examination. I would have him go further than examination, and attain to such abundance of grace that this holy and happy state shall become a witness to himself. The first part of this little book is meant to be a sieve to separate the chaff from the wheat. Let my friend use it upon himself. It may be the best day's work he has ever done. He who looked into his accounts and found that his business was a losing one was saved from bankruptcy. This may also happen to my reader. Should he, however, discover that his heavenly trade is prospering, it will be a great comfort to him. No man can lose by honestly searching his own heart. Friend, try it at once.